Hey guys, what's up? Rich Kids 20 coming at you with another episode of Beginner's Guide Help to How to Beat Dark Souls 1. Today we are doing what we I like to call an overworld cleanup. <clears throat> that means taking care of a lot of optional stuff <clears throat> as well as clean up uh, some, maybe some prep for stuff you're going to need later in the game or something like that. So on this episode we're going to go take care of the Hydra, the Moonlight Butterfly, uh, Havel, uh, some people call him Havel, uh, but I just, I don't know. Uh, I, I like calling him Havel. Uh, and we're going to come back here and get ready for Sin's Fortress, which is right there. Uh, we're also going to take care of one other. Oh, we're also going to take care of this demon that's right down here. This, uh, I forget what they call him. I forget what these demons are called, but this, uh, this little headless bad boy. We're going to actually take care of him now. Because we are equipped and ready to roll. So just dodge his attacks. He's his magic attacks here. And he's a little bit challenging to dodge. Because sometimes, even if you dodge his attack, his tail will still whip you or something like that. Uh, I tried to dodge, but I was a little late on that one. A little late on that one. That's fine. We got these awesome plus three Estus now. We're doing way more damage now than we would be... Uh, if we fought him the first time we saw him, we would have probably barely done maybe like 30 to 50 damage to him. Now we're doing 170 some, you know? We are doing way more damage to this guy. So yes, you just want to dodge all of his attacks. If you could dodge all of his attacks successfully, this guy is easy mode chump change. So as you saw, we dodged the attack, we still got hit by his smashing downward fist style. <laughs> Uh, charge at him. Uh, but that's okay. As long as we don't get hit by the main front of the attack, we don't take nearly as much damage. Gives you about 2,000 souls, not a whole lot, but you do get some Demon Titanite, which is used to upgrade, I believe, certain types of weapons. I don't, I remember what, certain types of uh, modified weapons. I don't remember which kinds, but there you go. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go for the Moonlight Butterfly, because uh, that'll be closer to a bonfire. And then we'll move around and take care of the Hydra and stuff like that. So first things first, we're going to go for the Moonlight Butterfly. And if I already didn't mention it, you need to go back to the Undead Parish where we were. That's where we, where we started this video. Uh, if you weren't obviously there, get to that point. Because I know we stopped at Firelink Shrine by cut out. Because I've shown you a couple times how to get to uh, the Undead Parish. So hopefully you were able to travel there. If not... Uh, go back and watch some of my previous videos and follow my direction, my, my, my way of how to get there. Uh, so we are going to go over here and we're going to uh, kindle this bonfire that we chose not to kindle earlier. Also, I spent 20,000 souls out of the 40,000 I had because it didn't take much of the 40,000 souls to uh, upgrade my cleaver. Uh, I spent that on getting the Crest of Artorius, so if you want to spend some of that 40000 on that, that's not a bad idea, but you, if you are actually following this point for point, um, then you might have already spent them. I also spent some of them to get the Reinforced Weapon and Reinforced Armor and Repair Equipment uh, from the... Uh, what's, what's his face? From uh, Andre, the, uh, the blacksmith, for about two grand each, so... So I spent some more money on. You don't need to have the Crest of Taurus yet. Uh, whenever you get 20,000 souls, you can come over here and pop it in. Uh, and that will bring you to this area. It's a really good farming area. Uh, I, if, you, if you're going to farm, I highly recommend it there. Uh, anywho, we're going to reverse our Halloween here. We're going to pop this humanity and we're going to kindle this. Now eventually we'll be able to kindle stuff to uh, up to t 20, which I've mentioned before, but we can't do that until we fight Pinwheel, so we have to, we have to wait. We might go, now uh, actually we don't really need more than 10 at any point, so we don't really, you know, if, you get, if you've gotten good at dodging, then you do not need to worry about uh, up upgrading your SS Blast to 15 or 20. So you can wait on that one. Since we already uh, went through the fog and whatnot and uh, awakened these D-bags, D uh, they are just going to be up and ready to roll. So you got to come over and attack them right out the gate. So yes, as I mentioned uh, in a previous video when we went and got that wolf ring, this direction is the way to go to get to... Uh, 
uh, to get to Moonlight Butterfly, and that's exactly where we're going. We'll also be able to uh, find the item. Ooh, we attack. Sometimes they don't attack. I tried to predict that one and dodge it. It didn't work. Sometimes they try to cast this like movement impairing thing on you, which is an easy way to just destroy them. Anyways, there's an item over there. I don't know. It's some kind of pike or something. We gotta deal with those snake things around the tree. So just know there's some kind of like spearish, pikeish item over there that you can get. This I believe it is that. So you only have to fight two of those guys. As you can see, that's also fake tree. Huh. I don't know what that drops or if that has anything, but you know that's that's there's an option. Anywho, uh, we only have to fight one of these giants if you go around this path. And I think I was mentioning something. Let's see, let's see if we can. Yeah, there we go. We got him to cast the thing. Easy kill. I don't remember what we were mentioning. <clears throat> By the way, if you want to make Moonlight Butterfly easier, you can come over here and summon uh, Witch Beatrice. Uh, we won't need that uh, for this fight, but if you want to make that fight easier and you have your humanity there, you can go do that. Uh, oh yeah, I was mentioning that there's a holy uh, ember thing here, so you can make your weapon occult or something like that. I don't know, it does extra light damage or something like that. It makes it scale with... Uh, with faith, if I if I remember that correctly, I don't know if it does. That could be Dark Souls three, and I could just be uh, memorying it wrong. But I believe that's what it does. So there you go. You know, keep that in mind. So for this fight, it's pretty easy. You can't attack her uh, until she lands. Try to dodge her uh, two or well, usually two out of her three magic attacks. There's those ones, and there's these big glob ones. Those ones are easier to dodge than. The other ones are than this one is, uh, but if you got some good magic resist, like that one, just dodge it and it'll smack into the wall. If you got good magic resist, this boss is not hard at all. Just dodge your shit until she lands and then beat the crap out of her. At this point in the game, we'll probably beat her in one rotation of attacks. Um, uh, looks like it's about to land. There we go. Dodge those. Just try to keep dodging when she casts that. You know, usually dodge it. Usually. Not every time. But that's okay. It doesn't do fuck load damage. That one does, though. Don't get hit by that. Because that's like getting hit by like three or four bolts at once. So definitely try not to get hit by that one. That one hurts. Alright, she's coming down. Just all out attack. Just massive amounts of damage. She'll start lighting up when she's going to blow up. Uh, so it's not just free hits. But we'll see if we can kill her before she does that. Good, we did. Awesome! So as you see, very easy, especially at this point in the game. I think she drops... how much? 10,000? So maybe 6,000? 10,000! Okay, yeah, I was... I gotta go with my first guess. Ah, on point. Alright, so 10,000 souls, nothing to shake your fist at. Uh, you can use those to help you get uh, the Crest of Artorias if you haven't already. Uh, I don't really need to. I'm actually gonna... I might try to save these souls for uh, buying large embers. As you can see, this kind of looks like... Uh, what's his face? Uh, kind of looks like uh, Andre, but I think it's not. You get the Watchtower Basement Key, which you don't need if you have the Master Key, but it's good to get because that's where Havel is. And you also get the Divine Ember and a Homeward Bone, which actually, we're going to use that Homeward Bone since they gave it to us for free. Uh, and get out of here. So we don't have to run all the way back. Uh, and then we need to head our way back over here. So yeah, uh, once we get to Sin's Fortress, we will be able to buy uh, large uh, Titanite shards, which will be very nice. Um, hello, sir. Fuck yeah! Uh, so we'll be able to upgrade this, and I want to save a lot of my souls, because the first person we can buy it from uh, really early on uh, charges 4000 apiece for them. Not the uh, 800 for the for the small ones. No, we're talking big old four grand a piece. Uh, so if we want to get any meaningful upgrades, we're going to have to. And the reason why this isn't plus six, it should be a plus six, but it's not a plus six. The reason for that is because I uh, accidentally uh, up modified my battle axe because that was also plus five. Uh, two plus six, and I was like, fuck. So I didn't get to modify this one because I only had one large titanite. So before we go down and face the Hydra, because that is where we're going first, um, we gotta go fight the Black Knight, and I'm gonna show you what another bonfire is. 
as well as the location to get to the easy part of Blight Town uh, if you don't have the master key. Uh, not that way. Right, we gotta keep going. There is also one of these guys here, one of these little lizards here, um, which should be pretty easy to deal with. Awesome one here, got him. Got some more ch Titanite chunks, which, while that's uh, plus 10 to plus 14, pretty far away from us right now, um, that's going to be nice that we get, the second we get the uh, huge ember, we will be able to uh, immediately get it to like probably plus 12 by this point, plus 12, plus 13, so that's going to be really nice. And I'll show you the exact location of one of the Titanite slabs. I believe you can also trade for one of the Titanite slabs, by the way, that's where that set is and where the longbow is. I believe that's the Ferris set, uh, what Ferris is wearing. Uh, oh, fuck, I didn't mean to. I was like, why are you moving? Why is everything moving? Uh, but let's look at it. Yeah, the leather armor, I guess. That, but that's what Ferris wears. If you don't know who Ferris is, if you're going for a bow build, um, that you want Ferris's longbow. <laughs> it's a really nice bow with a really nice scaling. Alright, so this guy, don't take him here on this small area. Bring him up. He will follow you for quite some time. Uh, I'd say right here is pretty good. It's pretty open space. Um, pretty sure he's going to follow us. Should follow us that far. Oh fuck! Hi. <laughs> I was like, "Where is he?" All right. So this is a uh, <clears throat> this is a halberd uh, wielding black knight. This, yeah, he's black knight. Um, kind of looks silver knight in this light, but I'm pretty sure he's a black knight. Um, and yes, we will face silver knights, and they will be the bane of our existence. But yeah, he's he's pretty easy. He can do quite a bit of damage, but he's you know he's he's a pushover. BOOM! Ah, oh, I thought that would knock a shield away. It's like, it's such a strong attack. Surely it must knock a shield away. But he's pretty easy. Just don't fight him in a uh, small area. He yeah, gets some, And he'll be just fine. Gives you blue Titanite chunk. I think he gives that every time. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but... Yeah, whatever. Anywho. <clears throat> so let's go down here. I'll show you where that bonfire is. Uh, if you don't have the master key and you have to go this direction, uh, then uh, you have to fight that black knight, or at least run past him. Uh, running past him is not a bad idea. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you'll have to book. Alright, so here's where the bonfire is. We're not going to rest at this bonfire. Because we don't really... We don't really need it. I don't think we're going to die to the hydra. But you never know. Awesome. Can we do this? Yes, we can pull this lever. Awesome. So don't just run off. Make sure you pull the lever. I've definitely done that a few times myself. Uh, <laughs> All right. Bring me down, baby. Do -do -do. All right, so uh, more of these, more of these here. So here we go. This is another entrance into uh, uh, into Lower in Orlando, which will not in Orlando. Uh, yes, yeah, see that where that dragon is, that decrepit dragon. That was the place. That was the place we were at. You go that way, you'll get back up. You just take a left out of here. We're not gonna fight this guy because this guy's uh, these dragons can be quite annoying. Uh, so run past the dragons and uh, head up that way and you'll get to uh, the easy way for Blacktown if you did not start with the Master Key, which I recommend starting with the Master Key. And the only reason why I say don't start with it, would say don't start with the Master Key is because, and only because, uh, you want to get the, uh, the giant fucking axe from the uh, Asylum Demon. Uh, and there, in which case, the only way to do that, unless you want to spend an hour fighting them with the broken straight sword, is to uh, start with black fire bombs. Uh, that is the only reason, foreseeable reason why anyone would start without the master keys, unless they also, unless you want to go immediately go down to Blight Town. Um, actually, I don't think you can without the master key. So yeah, no, not even that. Unless you want to use the to get the twenty manis to try to increase your item find chance. Um, but that's not really worth it. You can grind it out. 
Alright, so the Hydra's down there. He's going to start spitting shit at us all rude-like. Um, that's why we want to try to draw this guy out. Draw all these enemies out without that Hydra down there, you can see now. Without him spitting at us. Come on, can we get some? Come get some, bro. These guys are pretty easy. Just move away from their attacks and attack them. They're very slow, very sluggish. They don't have a lot of health. Uh, but they are crystals, so they usually do have pretty decent uh, damage reduction. Most of the time. Um, kind of later in the game, but early in the game they can be quite annoying as well. So, you know, you never know. Oh yeah, watch out for that one, by the way. I, didn't th I knew he was using it, but I didn't think it would reach me, so that's why I didn't try to dodge it. But it, it reached. <laughs> it definitely reached. Alright, so we need to pull out the last two, probably get them killed by the Hydra. Um... If at all possible. Uh, let's try to pull these over here. Okay, didn't get him hit with the first wave. Uh, yo, blast, blast me, son. Ah, uh, it's getting... Oh, yeah, I was like, I don't think I dodged. Nah, I dodged. You can't stop me from dodging. So yeah, that the blast is the hardest part about the... Ah, uh, I tried to dodge. If you miss with this butcher cleaver, you're in that animation for a while. <laughs> Your own ally is... Well, I guess they're not really allies. But your own teammate is against you. How does that make you feel? All right. Oh uh, yeah, that the, him them spitting that magic water spell thing at you is the hardest part of these hydras. Other than that, they're like they're easy mode. <laughs> Complete easy mode. We'll heal up. Because I doubt we'll be I'll be able to perfectly dodge these because they do quite a bit of they travel pretty fast. Quite a bit of AOE on them. Yeah. Uh, but that's fine. Didn't take too much damage on that one. I think we just got hit by the splash, not actually the bullet. Uh, which is fine. Once you get up close enough to them, they'll stop doing this. <laughs> uh, and then they'll start attacking you. That's also where the night gear is. So defend. And then slap. Slap. Slap at them. Two hits will knock off the heads. They also probably miss you a lot. So two slaps will take off one head. Just keep working on it. The least lower amount of heads they have, the lower chance that they'll hit you. Sometimes they'll think you're far away for some reason and try to do that to you. But you see, even without a shield, still didn't do much damage blocking with your weapon. So it's it's all good. Come on. Swing. There we go. Another head off. A few more to go. Uh, this gives you a dragon scale and also a sorcery ring. I don't really recommend the sorcery ring, especially not for beginners, because it will half your health, uh, which you need your health, <laughs> uh, especially if if you aren't used to dodging a whole lot. Oh, fuck. Splash enemy, splash enemy. Oh, don't run too far forward too, because you can fall into the water and die. Let's keep that in mind. All right, walk up to him. Boom, boom. Take him out. I'm pretty sure, yeah, when you do a lot of damage, you don't have to take off all the heads. If you do enough damage to them, you'll kill them. Do it without taking off the heads, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> don't call me on that! Yeah, I guess you do. So they're starting to only take one hit because they're low on health. Or something. I don't know. So this one could be the hardest to hit because his head will go in all fucking sorts of different directions. Usually way over here, really close to the edge of the water, so I don't like it. You kind of have to wait him out, which is annoying. It's like, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't over there, bro. Over here. Yeah, just wait him out. It's not really a boss. It's a, more of a mini boss, um, in my opinion. But yeah, you, uh, the dragon scales I mentioned, when you get those dragon scales, you can use them to upgrade dragon weapons. Much like, you fucking kidding me? Uh, much like uh, the uh, the Drake Sword, which I recommend getting uh, for new players. You can upgrade it to get it to do more damage. So this can be a pretty good fight that you might want to take earlier in the game. You, I am getting sick of your fucking shit, bro. Okay, we'll try to get him when he comes over there. When his head returns over here, let's swap at him. Uh, went over that side. What the hell?
Alright. Over here now. Over here now. Oh, that one's actually closer. I could have hit that one. Oh, fuck. He keeps getting clo farther away from me. Ah! Missed. Missed. Because I can't follow where he's going, because otherwise I'll get fly off the fucking side of the map. Yeah, hit me over here, bro, so I can get you on the way back. Got him. That didn't kill him. Are you fucking kidding me, bro? You kidding? Are you shitting on me? Got him, that's what's up, yeah, fuck you, okay. Hydra down, that last head is really fucking annoying, but what are you going to do? So we got a dragon scale and the dust crown ring. As I mentioned, dragon scale can upgrade dragon weapons, which can only upgrade dragon weapons, and the uh, the ring here uh, grants extra sorcery castings, so it doesn't even give you more damage, just more castings, but halves your HP. Not a good idea. Anywho... We're right over here at Havel. We're going to go take him out. Uh, which you get Havel's Ring, which can increase your equip load, uh, which can be very nice uh, if you're going to go for really heavy armor, um, like Havel's set, which we will get later in the game. For now, we'll just take care of him right here. And I believe this is the last person we're taking out before we go back to Sin's Fortress. All right, there he is. This is Havel. You'll find him in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3. I don't know if he's in Dark Souls 2, but there you go. He does a fuck ton of damage with the Dragon's Tooth, which you can also get when you get all Havel's gear. Oh, wow. For someone with the highest po pose in the poise in the game, I took your shield away pretty easily, man. Alright, so he's pretty easy to, to dodge his attacks. You just gotta not get greedy, like I did many times when I tried to fight him at lower levels. Um... <laughs> Because you do way not much damage to him, even with how strong this weapon is right now, still not doing much damage to him. 125 is good, but uh, still not that great. Ah, fuck! As you see, you don't want to get hit by Havel. Even at higher levels with a thousand health, you don't want to get hit by Havel. You get hit by Havel low levels, he will one shot you. Ugh. He almost followed me with that one. Now he's got a shield out. He's taking less damage. There we go. Got Havel down. He doesn't give much souls. I don't think like a thousand, maybe two thousand, something like that. Three thousand. Not bad. But he does give you Havel's ring. As mentioned, this will increase your equip load. Uh, so we could equip that and then use that ring. Um, <clears throat> use that ring to uh, give us uh, so we can have the pants of this gear uh, but for now we don't we don't we, I don't need that I don't really need the pants I'm doing just fine and these cool little booties so I'm I'm fine so we're gonna head back up I believe let me look my notes here real fast yep that is all for the first uh, section of this game now we want to head back up to go to Sin's Fortress. That is our next destination. So we gotta head back over to this corner to do such and head back up to the Undead Parish, which I'll show real fast because it doesn't take that long to get there, just in case you don't want to have to run all the way back the other way. Because if you go up all the all those stairs that we were just at right by Havel, that will bring you up to the Taurus Demon area. Um right around the Taurus Demon area. So uh, you can use that to run to Undead Parish, which will take you a while, or you can go back this way, uh, which is kind of hidden off in the corner. So if you don't exactly know where it is, that could be bad. Well, not bad, but it'll take you a little bit to find it. But it's just you just keep going to the farthest corner, farthest reaches of the corner, keep going up, and we will find ourselves back out to the gardens with this little guy right here. And since we already killed this demon, he will not respawn. He is gone. Done with him. Very nice. 
And boom, back to the undead parish where we will travel over and fight Sin. It's a fortress. Not Sin himself, because Sin's not really a person. I don't think. I don't know. Just his fortress, which is annoying. Oh, by the way, how you uh, get. You give your, like, the large ember and the uh, holy one that we just found, the light one, whatever the fuck it is, you give it to Artorius here. So, every time you talk to him, he'll be like, yo, you wanna give me that shit? And be like, yeah, oh, cool, fucking shit, yeah. Uh, so, you can turn them into divine weapons, uh, which does extra magic damage, which is pretty nice, but we can't do any of that. Uh, so there you go. That's how you do that. Um, and now we travel up here, and we're gonna go into Sin's Fortress next time, and the next episode, we are going to go through Sin's Fortress and fight the next boss, the Iron Golem, and I will see you in that episode.